Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live stream. We've got a lot of things to go over. So let's just jump right in, shall we? So the title of the thumbnail and, of course, what we're talking about today is everything is breaking. Things are breaking around us, and it's not really surprising, especially if we look at what's happening. So first of all, yesterday was quite a day, right? We saw 69K. Everybody was super happy. And then, of course, we ran down to 60K. Everybody was super sad. But the uh, majority of what people uh, have understood is that that was going to happen. And then, of course, what we happened yesterday with the Bitcoin ETFs, we see that in all actuality, it was actually a pretty darn good day for the 5th of March. We saw BlackRock at nearly $800 billion worth of inflows. Think about that. $800 million worth of inflow for BlackRock. Now, to offset that, of course, we have Grayscale on the far right at $332 million. And of course, the positive inflow was 600, roughly $650 million. And it just seems to me like Grayscale, as much as it's doing, it still has a lot of Bitcoin, but it's breaking down. And those flows, they could increase, they could decrease, but there's only so much Bitcoin that they possibly can have. And if we take a look at it, actually, there's a better way to look at this, which is Bitcoin holdings over time. Now, when I see this, it gets me a little bit more bullish than what I actually should be. But when I see it, I'm like, okay, this does make a lot of sense. And what we're taking a look at here is when this all started for the Bitcoin ETF itself on January 10th, did you know that Grayscale had... 619,000 Bitcoin. Imagine that, 619,000. It almost, I mean, it was close to, I mean, given more time, it probably would have had a, roughly a million. And of course, there's only 21 million out there and only 19.5 have actually been mined. But if you can just kind of extrapolate that and go, that is a boatload of Bitcoin to actually held. And over time, you can see how much it's actually decreased. Now, who's the big one, the big winner? Of course, it's iBit, which of course, that is BlackRock. And they have 183,000. So from January, let me do some quick math here. So January, February, okay, roughly that's like two months. In roughly two months, they've gone from 619,000 to 400,000. You're looking at roughly 200,000 Bitcoin has been reduced from what it has and just has been dumped in the market. Now, if we take a look at that over here, we can see that not everybody is getting out of the market. People are, of course, they're selling off. Either they don't like Grayscale, they don't like the actual, uh, the amount that they actually have to pay for the fees, or it is something else, something like FTX has to sell off to actually pay back the creditors and everything else in, in between. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if we take a look at it, I mean, this is positive news. And at some point, and we all know this, we've all known this for quite some time, things are gonna break down. Grayscale is not going to be able to dump and there's going to be an equilibrium. I think it's going to be a nice equilibrium between what Grayscale has, what BlackRock has, and also the second big player in the game, which would be Fidelity. Now, overall, we still have $8.5 billion that have gone in flow into this ETF. But I got to tell you, things are breaking down. And I think it's going to be good news for us. I think we've got another month, maybe two to go. And after that, it's going to be pretty smooth sailing. So I know people are bullish. Maybe they're just not bullish enough. Who knows? But talking about breaking down, this is the thing that's really been bothering me lately. I mean, really been bothering me for some reason. Coinbase. I do not understand. And maybe someone can enlighten me in the comments section. I'm not a developer, as you may have known. But I do not see how Coinbase, who, yes, they do have the majority of the custody for the various ETFs that are out there, not all of them, but, but the majority, how they can't fix an issue, which is a massive amount of demand, massive amount of trades. I understand that from 2021. And let me remind you that we're not even at the peak of the total volume that we've done. And we're not at the peak of the actual market cap, which is roughly around $3.1 trillion of last cycle in 2021, We're roughly about $2.3 trillion, somewhere around there. Excuse me, $2.3. It just amazes me that it keeps breaking down at these inopportune moments when we hit these points. Now, of course, yesterday we saw a massive amount of liquidations. I want to say it's uh, $1.12 billion, and that was longs and a short. So the bears and the bulls got wrecked equally. Sorry, Charlie. That's just how it goes. But again, when these things happen, it just kind of astounds me. And then people will say, well, Rob, you don't understand because there's you know, not only that to do with, with the regular folks, but they're also doing everything with, uh, you know, for all the ETFs and they're custodying all these ETFs. And of course, OTC and they have to buy the Bitcoin. I get that. But let me ask you a quick question. I don't have Binance. 
I am unfortunately am stuck with limited availability of certain exchanges. But how many times has Binance gone down? Just a quick question. Now, there may be little aspects of it, but I mean totally gone down. And then people would say, well, there's the volume. There's the, they have to do so much volume. Look, yesterday there was a billion dollars, give or take, right? It may, you know, more as far as like how much was actually going and inflows and of course the altcoins and things like that. But I just want you to take a look at coinmarketcap.com because it's actually up and running on like CoinGecko and take a look at the trading volume of the last 24 hours. Binance, 65 billion, 249 million, 540,000, 288. That's a lot of volume. That's a lot of volume. Coinbase, 10 billion, 477 million, 644,949. And Bybit, OKX, up bit cracking, good for you guys. Kraken didn't go down. However, it went down today, which is kind of odd at only 3.2. But again, uh, if someone could enlighten me why Coinbase goes down, why this continues to keep happening, even in 2021 it happened, and they realized that, so they hired more developers, their stock went up. I'm pretty sure they're doing just fine, just on my fees alone. <laughs> so maybe they get to kind of figure that out for the next time when we have the next blow off top. That would be nice. And I got to tell you, not only does it uh, bother me, it also bothers Kathy Wood. as She sells off $31 million in Coinbase stock after the site crash. Now, I don't think she did that just because she was ticked off that the site crashed, but I just thought it was a very funny article to add into it to say, look, People get uh, tired of this nonsense. Actually, I think that she pretty much sold off because she's taking profits. But it was interesting. I didn't know this. That uh, Kathy Wood, head of ARK Investment, sold roughly $31 million worth of coin. Despite the move, coin is still ARK Investment ETF's largest holding, which I didn't know that. I did know. It's also one of the few wins of Wood's major picks. I did not know that. I thought Kathy Wood was the next oracle. But hey, nobody's perfect, right? Arco also holds a significant stake in both Tesla and Roku. Both companies are struggling and their stocks have each fallen close to 30% this year. I thought she was into NVIDIA, but maybe I'm incorrect. I just found it interesting that, uh, you know, as, as much as we put some people on pedestals, they're not perfect. So just remember that as we move forward. But that leads me to my last point, and I'll get off my soapbox, which is I need everybody to pay attention and to make sure that they have multiple exchanges. I have screwed this up personally. I uh, I do have Kraken, I do have Coinbase, I need to branch out, I need to do other things because when we have these blow off tops and when we actually wanna take profits, we're at the mercy, unfortunately, of these centralized exchanges, kind of sucks. We can use DEXs, we can use that and put in the stable coins, it's uh, one way to do those things. However, if we really wanna move things around, it's gonna be the centralized exchanges and I need everybody to make sure that they have multiple backups. One of those could be crypto.com and the other one could be river.com. I don't have an affiliate link for either of these two. I don't work with them. I actually have an account at crypto.com. That's why I've been buying some random altcoins like uh, Ronin a while ago and Arweave because I can't get it anywhere else. But uh, these ones are the ones that I actually put this out yesterday. I asked on X, on Twitter, what do you call Twitter? And said, so what have you guys been using? And the two most popular, well, it's actually three, Kraken, which I have, uh, Crypto.com and uh, River. So I had never actually heard of River. So I will have to take a look at that, but it looks pretty good. Zero fees on recurring orders, instantly send and receive Bitcoin for larger investments for you whales out there. That's not me. But anyhow, Links in the description. It's not an affiliate link. I have no association with them whatsoever, but it looks good. And then lastly, I know we're in love with Bitcoin, but I've, I've told, talked about this before. I'm going to say it again. You have to pay attention to alts because at some point the alts are going to run. And I know if we take a look at what is bleeding against Bitcoin, yes, of course, some alts don't do great. I get that. But at some point they're going to run. They're going to run hard. And I want you guys to be aware of that. So let's take a look at, just kidding, we can't look at CoinGecko because it's down, but that's only the first time. So I'm going to forgive them. But we got a great website called CoinMarketCap. We could take a look here. So yeah, in the last seven days, I mean, 
Bitcoin's up uh, 9%. Ethereum's up 16%. That's pretty good. 14% for Solana back to 129. Watch out. Cardano. XRP is up 7%. Wow. Congratulations. Doge going 42%. Shiba Inu, the big winner, is up 200%. So I know everybody likes to talk about... <laughs> <laughs> they say, you know, my project's got utility and it's got real functionality and it's going to change the world. And I'm like, yeah, but have you seen what Dogecoin did? Yeah, dog coins. I know it's ridiculous, but it is the way it is. Bitcoin is run, or excuse me, the crypto market is run on three things. It's on speculation, hype, and greed. And there's no better place than that than dog coins. So congratulations, Dogecoin and Shiba Inu holders. You're sitting pretty. And 27% uh, for Polkadot or something, Uniswap. Dex is out there. It's fantastic. Uh, one of my favorite. Near is up uh, almost 50% for the week, 22% of the day. So fantastic. The point I'm trying to make here is that altcoins are running. And if you want to take a look at, I have essentially four different categories which I think are going to do very well. Web3 Gaming, Dexes, DPIN, Decentralized Physical Infrastructure Network, and Layer 1s. But if you take a look over here at CoinMarketCap, there's this, you can click on categories. There's one thing I'd like you guys to take a look at. Look at any, any, any category that you want to, it's fine. But there's one, let's see if I can find it, Cog Chain. Click on generative AI. I want you just to go through this because what we just talked about as far as alts look pretty good, right? Nice, sweet, very good. But uh, look at the ones in AI. And I think AI is going to run very hard. Seven days, BitTensor, 21%. Render, 26%. Fetch AI, we just talked about this three days ago, four days ago. 33% in 24 hours, 84% in seven days. Singularity, we just talked about this th this weekend. It's up 31% in 24 hours. Akash, we just talked about this this weekend, 20% in a day. Ocean Protocol, that's an old one. I remember that one from back in the day. Echelon Prime, I think it's a gaming, but yeah, whatever. But anyhow, I want you to pay attention to this and just kind of do your own research as best you possibly can because I think AI is going to do very fantastically well. And last thing I, I will say is this. There's two things. There's a chart that I put together and I was taking a look at just how things do after bull runs and if they actually make the hype. And I took a look at 2017 and the top 53 cryptos at that point. Most of these you guys are not going to know. Well, some will say. Everybody knows Bitcoin, Ethereum. But I wanted to see if it did an all-time high the cycle after, which 2017, 2021, and if it actually stayed in the top 53. Most didn't. Bitcoin Cash XRP didn't hit it. IOTA, remember IOTA? Yeah, not really. Dash? <laughs> NEM? Do you remember Bitcoin Gold? Exactly. NEO? Qtum? BitConnect, what's the what's the up? Populous, only say go. Lisk, come on. Stratus, BitShares, Ardor, Hypercash, Bitcoin, NXT, Monocoin, Verge. No one knows this stuff. Steam, Veritasium. There was a coin called Einsteinium. Anyhow, you get my point. So when we get into these altcoins, just know that most aren't going to stick around. However, having said all that, there was an interesting thing that I did take a peek at, which was, I also wanted to see how we did from 2021, the top 53 on November 14th, 2021, and how many were still in the top 53 as of today. And I was actually pleasantly surprised. So I think maybe things are changing maybe a little bit, but check this out. Let me blow this up. A little bit more. There we go. Look at this. All these that are still in the top 53 from, from November 14, 2021. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Coin, Tether, Solana, XRP, Polkadot, Doge, USD, Shiba Inu, we just talked about. Terra, haha, <laughs> no, unfortunately not. Avalanche, Litecoin, Chainlink, Wrap Bitcoin, Uniswap, Bitcoin Cash. Algorand is still in the top 53. Polygon, Crypto.com, we just talked about. It. V Chain, Stellar, ICP. Tron is still in the top 53. Crazy. Filecoin, ETH Classic. I don't understand. Cosmos, Theta is still in the top 53. Interesting. FTX is not for good reason. 
trash. Hedera, not Phantom, Mere Protocol Die, and then a bunch, of, well, a little bit. Multiverse, which used to be called Elrond, Decentraland, Helium, Tezos. The graph is still there. Terra is gone. Monero, EOS, Pancake, Swap with the rest of them. But what is interesting to me is that 62%, 33 out of the 53, are still in the top 53 from 2021. Can you, isn't that amazing? I, th I thought it was amazing because I would all, I would just assume they would have all fallen off. So when we talk about altcoins, some can do well. Maybe things are changing. Maybe the uh, maybe it's not all hype and speculation and greed. Maybe they will do something. That's why I'm big on to uh, AI and to deepen, but time will only tell. And lastly, before we go in the q and I just want to mention this, which is be careful out there because don't make this mistake that I make. And also what Bitcoin Carl made. This was a pretty good post. I like this one. He says, I got a friend who saved up $100,000. He bought 10 Bitcoin at 10,000, which is pretty good, which is worth what? $660,000 today? Not bad. But he panic sold. He panic sold them at 5K. And with the 50K he had left, he bought a truck. Never bought back in, hates Bitcoin, still holds a grudge against me. Does that sound familiar? Probably. So I know we're all exuberant and we're all excited about this bull market. I get it. I understand. But I've screwed up before talking about crypto and digital assets and saying it's going to be the greatest thing of all time. When in reality, what I should have said is this, which is, look, if you want to be an investor, just know that you're going to be down massively at some point. It's not easy, like everybody says. For every token that you hear that goes to the moon, there's a thousand or 500 or 200 or whatever it is that crash and people get burned big time. So if you want to become an investor, just know, give me four years. If you're going to do it, four years. There's a four year cycle in Bitcoin, crypto and digital assets. And if you can't hold for four years, then there's a line out the door over there. Go get some bonds and have fun staying poor. And that's it. So everybody. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.